Hey guys, just so you know, this is going to be a little bit late from the holidays. And for that reason, I'm very sorry about it because I always get busy during this time of year and things just always gets behind me with that. But anyway, this is going to be the last few, a, a few shows that I'm going to bring out for this, for these, uh, of the holidays. So do what you will with them. You can either watch them during, during this month, during January, or you can go on until next year. Your choice. But anyway, I'm going to start off with, with our episodes today. Today is going to be the top five darkest moments in Rankin Bass movies. As far as I know, Rankin Bass movies have always been classic movies for Christmas. Doing their companies making movies, Christmas movies, such as Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, Santa Claus Come in Town, Frosty the Snowman, and the Little Drum Boy. All these movies had some are, are classics and meant to be enjoyed by enjoyed by all children alike. But on the other hand, all of these movies have some dark moments in them that I need to touch on. In fact, a lot of these movies have some weird and dark moments that really can get to you and really scare you. And it really does leave a scar when you're a child. So with that in mind, let's do the top five Darkest Reagan Bass moments. Jack Frost. Number five. Jack Frost. I can't really say much about Jack Frost, only for the fact that this one is actually really, 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 really sad. The story is that Jack Frost dreams of becoming human. Instead of being a sprout, working for, working for Old Man Winter, making Christmas stuff. He falls in love with a girl and decides to hit off with her, along with Cooper Krause, who is evil and wants to marry her as well, and destroy and is the whole ruler of the town, making everything miserable for everyone else. But later on in the movie, there's a knight that comes around and actually gets Jack Frost's girl more interested in him than he is with him. With that in mind, Jack Frost is re it's a really sad movie has a very bittersweet ending with, with him not getting the girl in the end. Sure, it's a little bit like the Little Mermaid story, and sure, it's not, there's not much to the story, but with, with it being a very sad and bittersweet ending, it can be sad for, for a kid to see, and very mature for them to watch as well. But for that, I gotta give them credit for, for trying something a little bit new with the, with, with the, with the story retelling of this. I think it's a very decent special. Number four, the Winter Warlock. This character alone gave me nightmares for a week just looking at him. With his sharp teeth, his eyes, his crazy beard, and the very long fingernails. And his tree minions as well. Anything looking at this character could give any kid nightmares for sure. And as a dark character such as this, it can really, 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 really be something. But as a character, he actually is really a decent character for the fact that he changes later on in the show. Santa Claus gives him a toy train for kindness. For that, he turns into a nice guy and kind of, it kind of doesn't want to hurt him anymore. He becomes a good friend with um, with Santa Claus and is very helpful to him. In a way, Winter Warlock isn't that bad of a character. Sure, he has a redemption and sure he's a villain, but he quickly changes into something new and nice. For kids to be taught that sometimes you need to face your fears, and in the end, sometimes they're not always that bad. So for that in mind, this is a really cool villain. And even though he was a little bit dark to meet at first, in the end, it had a great payoff with him being good at the end and being a good friend. So with that, it's not too bad. Number three, Winter Bolt's death. This, this villain is from a particular movie that I don't think much people have heard of. It's called Rudolph and Frosty's Winter in July. And this is a crossover movie. I highly recommend it for it's it might be a confusing movie, but still likable to watch, and it brings the characters together in a very clever way. But anyway, enough with that. There is a character there is a villain called Winterbolt. And when he tries to confront Rudolph, Frosty, and his gang, somebody one of one their main character, one of their sidekicks, who is a cowgirl, shoots off her guns, and breaks his stick, resulting in him turning into a tree. 
This scene may sound ridiculous at first, but when you look at it, it's really dark the way he changes into a tree real quickly. His his feet turn into one with his little with the little trunks. His face turns very wood-like and creepy-like, and his hands just turn twisty to the side, making a very horrifying tree look for him. With that in mind, it is a very dark scene to look into. And how it happens so fast isn't isn't cra is crazy too. In a way, this scene is really a test to behold right there. Number two, the Little Drop Boy's backstory. This is one of the first dark scenes that I was ever encountered by. Of course, there was the win Winter Warlock one. But other than this, other than that one, this is the most darkest one that I thought I saw was a kid. I never saw a little drunk boy in my life, so when I turned 10, I decided to take a look at it and be curious and see what it was like. Unfortunately, nothing prepared me for this very dark backstory for the little drunk boy. Upon it, it doesn't seem that dark. But after you think about it, look what it really does to him later on. The story is that Aaron... The little drunk boy is actually not really fond of people. In terms of in terms of friends, all he has are his animals. Pretty much, he very hates people, and I mean all people. And the reason for this reason for this incident was because of the fact that his parents died in a tragic fire by people who have burned his burned his farm. And the only friends that he had that escaped were the were his three animal friends, Samson the donkey, Baba the sheep, lamb, and Joshua the camel. Every he, Aaron has blamed the people for everything they have done, for losing his parents and his whole family. As a lonely orphan, he runs away from his past and blames his and blames the people for it. With this in mind, this is a very dark backstory for Aaron to have. It is very dark because he's an orphan. And it's very sad to see him tragically go on. Not to mention the fact that he really hates people that much. There's no... You feel for him. And not to mention the fact that people are so cruel that way. You can definitely relate to him in a way. With that in mind, this backstory is very profound and I like it. It may be dark, but it definitely does bring a fur found into the story. Number one, Nestor the Long-Eared Donkey. Number one, this movie you probably never heard of before. It's basically like the Rudolph story, where he has a red nose, he gets laughed at, but he saves the day by saving Christmas. This is very similar to that, only Nestor has long ears, and he's a donkey. He belongs to a farm, and everybody laughs at him. But later on, we find out that he's the exact donkey who saved, who carried baby Jesus. This story is very cute, and I love it. And I love how it, how it connects to the Rudolph story, all of the other Rick and Bass stories. It's a very cute and enjoyable movie. But this movie is very, very dark, much sadder than Rudolph. Because, and I'll tell you why, Nestor... Loses his mother in the first five minutes of this movie because he was trying to warm her up from the cold. It turns out the guy that owned him threw him out in the snow, and the mother had to, had to warm him up by keeping him warm in the snow. And for that reason, his mother died in, during the cold, and it was very sad. Not to mention, every person that when Nestor meets laughs at him. At least Rudolph had occasional friends here and there, like Hermie and. Yukon Cornelius. Other than that, Nestor had no friends at all, except for maybe the cherub, who actually carried him along this way to where he needs to be. Other than that, Tilly is the only friend that he has. It's very sad. And the kid eventually his friends do warm up to him. Like the other donkeys in the barn. They do eventually warm up to Nestor. But in the end, they get taken away. And Nestor was taken along in the process, but unfortunately, they didn't like it because it has long ears. Anyway, this movie, throughout the whole way through, is depressing. It makes it more better when you see what happens in the final ending of this of this movie, and it's really enjoyable. Sure, you know what's coming, but it really is a cute, depressing, but also very profound short. I highly recommend it. 
And those are my dark moments of Wreck and Bass moments in Wreck and Bass movies. If you love them, comment below and tell me your thoughts. And tell me what other dark moments I have might have missed. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see you next time on uh, next Christmas about these top fives. Bye. And I hope I get to make sure make some more soon. Bye.